We are back up in here. This is how we do it in miles to go. Terrible working conditions, closed garage, 85 degrees outside. Ah, just another day. Um, yeah, well, first step for me, I'm gonna go around and spray everything with uh, WD-40, just cause that's what I have. <laughs> you could use a uh, penetrating oil or something like that. It doesn't really matter, just, the, the, I mean, we are in California, so this truck isn't too bad, but there is an okay amount of rust on it. I don't really know where it came from. There's a couple holes through to the floor, but the frame is solid. But I'm still gonna shoot everything with some WD-40, just hopefully that'll make my life easier in the long run. I'm gonna go around and get that. I'm gonna try to do everything removing as little as possible, just uh, because, I don't know, I'm lazy. So I don't know if these exhaust bolts are gonna come out very easily, but I don't know if I'm gonna actually have to remove them. I hope not. I'm gonna try to do it without it. I'm gonna try to just pick the transmission up and maneuver it around, around the actual exhaust pipe. But I may end up having to take it off, so I'm gonna spray it down. I'll get all the U-joints. Uh, I'm gonna keep going around and get all these bolts and then um, the next thing we're gonna do is drain the transmission fluid. I have a drain plug because this is an aftermarket pan. If you don't, you'll just have to remove all the bolts going around the perimeter of the pan. Yeah, you're definitely gonna wanna take the fluid out. This is a good time to change your fluid. Odds are, if you're taking the transmission off, you're probably gonna wanna just drain the fluid. All right, next step for me, is going to be, I'm gonna take out the drive shafts, the front and rear, since it's four wheel drive. Keep in mind, you don't have to do this in the exact order that I do it. Um, this is just what I'm gonna do. You may be able to get away with doing it in a different order. You know, whatever works for you. So, this is the front drive shaft for me. It's a 7 16 um, Let's see. Oh, what the heck? So you'll notice it just spins freely. You can't really do anything with it. So um, what you can do, pro tip, this is the front drive shaft. It's not engaged because we're just in neutral for the four wheel drive. So it spins freely. The back one will be locked up. All you have to do is engage four wheel drive. So go in the truck, put it in four wheel drive, high, low, doesn't matter. And then that'll lock this uh, drive shaft to the differential, to the wheels. Wheels are stuck on the ground, it won't spin. You can take it off all day long. All right, let me get those bolts off. All right, so I got two off. One thing that I do whenever I'm doing something like this is I just make cardboard templates of shit so I don't ever lose a bolt and I'm not ever missing something when I go to put it back together. So um, at the top here, you can see I labeled that front drive shaft front because this will be your front drive shaft and you'll have a rear side of it as well. I just poked a couple holes through it and stuffed the bolts through there. And um, I'm gonna do that with the other side, then I won't lose it. You can put them in Ziploc baggies, but I prefer just to have a template where I can draw a picture if it's a complicated shape that I need. One other thing some people say is to draw a mark or make a scratch so that you balance the drive shaft. Um, with the yoke. I don't know if you need to. I've done it before and I haven't done it before, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Why not? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to scratch one side of the screwdriver and then I'll scratch one side of the yoke so that I know which way to put it back together. As you can see, we are void of front drive shaft and I did um, switch it back into two wheel drive just so the linkage and the shifter for the four wheel drive off of the transfer case and the transmission and then it'll line back up easier. I don't wanna to try to leave it in four high and then try to get it lined up. Now I'm gonna move on to the rear drive shaft. All right, rear drive shaft, pretty much the same thing. It's just gonna be um, four 7 16 bolts. Take them out and you can scratch the shaft and the yoke if you want. 
and then the, the front end of it is just a slip yoke. It should pull right out. You don't need to unbolt anything. Depending on how your seals are doing in here, you may have some ATF or transmission fluid come spilling out. I don't think I'm going to, because as I was told, the transfer case was just rebuilt before I bought it. I'm not gonna rely on that. I'll put a bucket underneath for just in case. I don't wanna lay around and splosh in ATF. But four bolts, and then this end just slides right out. Easy. The next step for me is going to be taking off the transfer case. The rear drive shaft is off. Lighting's not great, but I'm on the passenger side and I'm trying to get everything off the transfer case so that I can unbolt it. And um, this would be the shifter for the transfer case. There's just a, if you can see it has a little cotter pin on the back side here. I'm just gonna slide that up and out. I'll get needle nose pliers but it's starting to come out right there. And then this should just be able to pull right off. And then I'll leave that bolted to the actual transfer case in too high. There's a, I think it's a speedometer cable. And the sensor for the speedometer is right back up in here. It's just a plug. Male and female connector pretty easily comes apart. There's one plug on the driver's side of the transfer case that you need to unplug. And then after that, there's one bracket right over here. It's a big long, there's two bolts, and then it runs all the way up to, um, those are the two bolts on the side of the transfer case. And it runs up to one of the bolts up here that bolts the bell housing to the, the engine. Right up there, there's the other end of that pole. So we'll go ahead and take that off the transfer case and from there we should unbolt it and then lower it down so we'll see where we go from there all right transfer case time oh, i've got a jack supporting it not a whole lot but i haven't taken off all the bolts yet so it's not really a big deal there are six bolts holding on the transfer case and then there's going to be that one um long bracket that holds it on the passenger side that attaches to one of the bolts on the bell housing so the bolts are right here. They're all, there's one here, another one up there, one directly on top, one directly on the bottom, and two more on the opposite side. They should all be 14 millimeter or 9 sixteenths. I had one that was a 15. I think um, it was just a different bolt the previous owner had put in because I know he'd been in here tinkering with it. They should be 14 millimeter or 9 sixteenths. I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt everything and then try to lower this thing down. It's just me hanging out by myself. Um, I've done a bit of research. Some people say it's anywhere from 100 pounds, basically up to 200 pounds. I don't know, I don't really buy it. I think it probably will weigh like 150, 120. I'm just gonna try to, for the most part, lift it off by hand, kind of set it on my chest underneath and um, roll it off of me. If you see this video, I guess I didn't die. Alrighty. All right. All of the bolts are off for the transfer case. It's just hanging out on a jack by the corner and it's still on the output spline from the transmission. If you look up in there, you can see the gap. That's the transmission right there. And then the transfer case right there and there's a gap. I can wiggle it. I'm just letting it drain out the last bit right now. And then I'm actually gonna get underneath it and just kind of, I'll just bench press it out, lift it up and uh, probably end up humping it a little bit to get it out and wiggle it out and then I should be free, lower it onto my chest and then I'll just roll off to the side or something, set it on the ground. The breather tube's hanging here, everything's disconnected. Um, I don't think it'll be too heavy. I think we'll be fine. Keep in mind, there is a, the breather tube is attached to uh, a breather at the top. So if you tip this thing upside down or put it too much on its side, it will spill, but um, I'm the only one here right now, so can't really film this, but I'm gonna get under there before it falls and try to bring it down. Check back in a minute, hopefully. So what we're gonna do next, start getting everything off the transmission so that I can just take it down. So this is, uh, I believe, the shifter the gear selector for the transmission right here. 
I'm just gonna pull out, there's a cotter pin there if you can see it. I'm just gonna pull it out and that should slide right out. Um, just like this. I'll slide right out. And that is pretty much everything on this side. Then we're gonna take the, first of all, I'm gonna get a few other things off the transmission. It's gonna be, over here we have the transmission cooler lines. Those are right up there. They run right in there. There's two of them, the send and the return. I don't have a line wrench, so I'm just gonna try it with an open box end. I'll see how that works. And then right back here, this is the, the throttle valve cable for the transmission. It's going right up there. I think it's a 10 millimeter nut or a bolt. I'll let you guys know what that looks like when I go ahead and take that off. And that's pretty much it as far as things go for being attached to the transmission. Then from there, with it still attached, we're gonna go ahead and get all the bolts off to remove the dust cover. It's gonna be, there's three, let's see if I can set the light down. There should be three right here. You've got one up top, one there, and then one more hmm, right down in there. And we might have to remove the two right here with these long braces that run up there. There'll be bolts there and there. And then the same on this side. Again, three more, all covered in grease. I'm gonna try not to remove the starter if I don't have to, but I might end up having to. I don't know exactly how it's bolted in, whether it's bolted into the block or the transmission bell housing. I'll let you know, but right now I'm gonna get those pieces off and um, we will go from there. Well, let's see, we got the throttle valve cable out. Um, that was a little bit tricky. I had to disconnect it from up top where it attaches to the, um, right by the carburetor or the throttle body injection, whatever you have. It is the cable that's on the underside. You just squeeze the two tabs and slide it through the bracket. That'll allow you to pull it up enough over here to take the, undo the little hook. Alright. Take this off, dust cover is off. Here's the torque converter, this is the thing we're replacing. This is the flex plate, your engine, transmission. There are three or four bolts. I'm using a 15 millimeter box end wrench to get them off. They're on the back side of the torque converter. You can see them right down there, there's one. And um, so the problem is, this is, this is attached to your engine and it's gonna spin and turn over with the engine as you rotate it. So what I've been doing, I've been taking the 15 millimeter, um, I'm going up here, getting on the bolt. That's the bolt. And all I did, this is a 14. Making me look bad. Okay, on the bolt, and all I did was have it right here, and then I kind of hit this with my hand. I hit the wrench with my hand. You can do it with a hammer while I was holding on to the flex plate. Because if you just do it slowly, it'll start to spin the engine over, and it won't move the bolt. Your other option, if that doesn't work, is hitting it with a hammer. Other than that, what you can do is wedge a screwdriver. I've done it with, with like this before. You wedge a screwdriver in the teeth of the flex plate and then jam that up against somewhere or have someone hold that and apply pressure the opposite direction that you're trying to loosen it. Um, the other thing is you could go ahead and stick a, um, a wrench on the crank pulley on the front of the engine and then hold that stationary while you turn this over. That should be torqued down more than this uh, flex plate. So that should be able to break these loose. If you still can't get that to work, um, you could try to get at it with an impact up over here. There's a little bit of room. You could fit an impact with a wobble socket over there and try that. 